Every year, more than 1 billion tires are discarded worldwide. As vehicle ownership increases and transportation networks expand, tire waste has become one of the fastest growing forms of industrial waste. Tires are engineered to survive extreme conditions, including high friction, heavy loads, and temperature fluctuations. These same properties make them extremely resistant to natural decomposition. A single tire can take hundreds of years to break down. When improperly stored, tire piles trap heat, collect rainwater, and create ideal conditions for mosquito breeding and spontaneous combustion. Tire fires are among the most dangerous industrial fires, capable of burning underground and releasing carcinogenic compounds into the atmosphere. This growing environmental pressure has forced governments and industries to rethink how tire waste is managed at scale. Instead of treating old tires as an environmental burden, modern recycling facilities approach them as a high-value engineered material. Tire rubber contains complex polymer structures, reinforcing steel, and chemical additives that can be recovered and reused when processed correctly. Among all recycling applications, rubberized asphalt stands out as one of the most technically efficient solutions. It allows massive volumes of waste rubber to be integrated directly into large-scale infrastructure projects, where performance improvements and environmental benefits occur simultaneously. The process begins long before tires reach the factory floor. Collection networks operate across cities, highways, and industrial zones. Tires are removed from vehicles, inspected for reuse potential, and sorted as recyclable material. Heavy-duty transport systems are designed to handle compressed tire loads, maximizing efficiency while minimizing fuel consumption. Logistics planning is critical as recycling plants depend on a continuous inflow of raw material to maintain stable production cycles. Once inside the facility, tires enter a multi-stage inspection system. Sensors and manual checks identify contaminants such as mud, stones, or excessive moisture. Tires are then categorized based on construction type, rubber hardness, and steel reinforcement density. This step is essential for process consistency. Mixing incompatible tire types can lead to uneven grinding behavior and reduced rubber quality. Once the large fragments have been separated from steel and textile fibers, the next crucial stage is precision grinding to produce crumb rubber of controlled particle sizes. This process begins by feeding the cleaned rubber fragments into grinding mills where aggressive mechanical forces break them down into much smaller granules. The size of these granules is critical. Too large, and they will not properly bind with asphalt. Too fine, and they may alter the workability of the mixture. Milling operations often employ multiple passes through screens and rotating blades to achieve consistent gradation ranges, typically between a fraction of a millimeter up to several millimeters. Modern recycling facilities may use ambient mechanical grinding or cryogenic grinding, where rubber is frozen at extremely low temperatures before fracturing. The cryogenic method produces a very uniform crumb structure and minimizes heat-induced changes in the rubber's properties. However, mechanical grinding remaining one of the most widely used techniques for producing crumb used in rubberized asphalt due to its cost-effectiveness and scalability. This engineered crumb rubber, with its precisely controlled particle size distribution, becomes the cornerstone of the modified asphalt mixture. The sizing and classification systems at this stage ensure consistent material performance when incorporated into the binder, laying the foundation for improved elasticity and strength in the final paving material. With the engineered crumb rubber ready, the material moves into the blending phase. In this critical step, crumb rubber is introduced into liquid asphalt binder under thermal conditions that promote absorption and expansion. At high temperatures, rubber particles absorb lighter fractions of the asphalt binder and undergo physical swelling. This interaction modifies the rheological properties of the binder, increasing elasticity 
improving thermal cracking resistance, and enhancing the overall durability of the pavement. There are two dominant methods for rubber integration, the wet process and the dry process. In the wet process, crumb rubber is blended directly with the asphalt binder before aggregates are introduced. This method ensures uniform dispersion of rubber throughout the binder matrix. In the dry process, crumb rubber is introduced into the mixture with the aggregate, and the interaction occurs during mixing and laying. Both approaches require careful control of temperature, mixing time, and shearing conditions to optimize performance and achieve homogeneous material characteristics. After quality approval, the rubberized asphalt mixture is transported to the construction site and laid using conventional paving equipment. Once compacted and cooled, the finished pavement exhibits enhanced performance characteristics compared to traditional asphalt. Rubberized pavement is known for its ability to resist cracking, withstand thermal cycling, and reduce traffic noise by several decibels thanks to the elastic properties of recycled rubber. These improvements contribute not only to smoother, quieter roads, but also to reduced maintenance costs over the road's lifespan. Approximately 1,500 scrap tires are used per lane mile of rubberized pavement in typical applications, diverting thousands of tires from landfill and helping address the global tire waste problem. What makes this process effective is not only the recycling of old tires, but how precisely the rubber is engineered to work with asphalt. By grinding waste tires into controlled crumb sizes, the rubber is able to interact directly with the asphalt binder rather than acting as a simple filler. Under carefully controlled temperature and mixing conditions, rubber particles absorb lighter components of the asphalt, swell, and distribute evenly throughout the mixture. This interaction increases flexibility, improves resistance to cracking, and allows the pavement to better absorb stress from traffic and temperature changes. As a result, rubberized asphalt lasts longer and requires less maintenance over time. At the same time, this process delivers clear environmental benefits. Large volumes of tire waste are diverted from landfills, and longer-lasting roads reduce the need for frequent repairs and raw material consumption. In this way, rubberized asphalt turns discarded tires into a functional material that improves road performance while supporting more sustainable infrastructure. What begins as discarded waste ends as the foundation of modern infrastructure. Through engineering precision and large-scale recycling, millions of old tires are given a second life beneath the roads we travel every day. This process is not just about building stronger pavement. It represents a shift in how industrial waste is reimagined, from an environmental burden into a valuable resource. As cities grow and transportation demands increase, solutions like rubberized asphalt show how sustainability and performance can move forward together, one recycled tire at a time. The story of rubberized asphalt reminds us that sustainability is not always about creating something new. Sometimes it is about rethinking what we already throw away. When waste is approached with engineering, discipline, and long-term vision, it can become part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Old tires, once seen as a growing environmental threat, now help build roads that are quieter, stronger, and more durable. This process shows that real environmental change does not come from small gestures alone, but from industrial scale action, where recycling is integrated directly into the systems that shape modern life.